Hello, Sense of Things. It's Jeff here and Ron for another weekly update on what's going on in the world, the markets, economics, and just something fun, usually. Ron, how you doing, bud? Good morning. Doing well. Uh, I will say fairly quiet week up until this morning with economic data, uh, a lot of year-end stuff. I can't believe tomorrow's December 1st. Uh, somebody wished me happy holidays for the first time on Tuesday. And I'm like, holidays? What, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we did have one last week too, remember? I know that, but it's candy canes were being sold right after Halloween. So you, you said, the, as soon as you walk into the supermarket, you, they're, they're shooting you with that waff of cinnamon. So yeah, that you know, and the, and the Christmas excited. music since about August at this point, uh, it's getting a little old. I, I got it. all good, all good though. Looking for I love the holiday season. Oh, I do too. Yeah, and, and like I said, this is a yeah, this is a fun week for us. We're doing a bucket list trip to to Europe to do the European Christmas market. So it's it's going to be fun. I'll I may be doing some shorts from over there, just talking about the European business climate and everything else. And those are always fun to do. So keep your eyes out as I'm making my way through Europe next week. Gotcha. Is it the Griswold vacation? It is the Griswold family. Ba In fact, we watched that the other week to make so sure that we caught all the stuff. And we will be in Germany. We'll be in London. Prague. Okay, it's Big Ben Parliament. Yeah. <laughs> Big Ben Parliament. Have done that multiple times driving around London, by the way. <laughs> I hear you. That's fantastic. So let's right, kick you, off you with kick the, up? Uh, a fun fact or yes. a fun thing. I caught this and... You'll, you can relate to this because this is in your old hood. The fun, <laughs> there was a truck driver that works for the, uh, for the treasury department yeah. who was driving down to Florida and had a, a truck full of dimes that he was taking down to Florida, stopped off in Philadelphia for uh, overnight sleep and somehow thieves managed to steal two million dimes from the back of this semi-trailer while he was sleeping which is about seven hundred way oh dollars. six tons i yeah. was just wondering six how tons much they were able to so i'm like how many people did they have a forklift whatever they said there was dimes all over the ground outside when they when he finally woke up and how they got to fence this. that yeah I, mean, I thought it it's actually genius from the fact of a thief because it's easy to get rid of them they can always eat because all they had to do is go to a vending machine and just start plowing dimes into it and they're they can eat forever at this point you know what god bless if that if that's what the way if that's what you're going to do you're going to walk around with a sack of dimes to eat god bless you i know and, and there's actually been a spree of these tractor trailer robberies. this is what i thought was really funny they stole frozen crab legs, shrimp, meat, beer, and liquor, and now dimes. So I don't really see Sounds their like a trend. party. <laughs> but Unbelievable. The, the Philadelphia dime incident, I think, is somewhat interesting. That, that might rival the Goodfellas Lufthansa heist. It, it does rival the Goodfellas Lufthansa heist. It just, I, I just don't know how they got six six tons of of dimes out of there. that's it's not like you're just grabbing like, bags i don't know how many i didn't see how many guys there were but you, can you imagine like them setting up like an assembly line with buckets yeah. and just handing this uh, yeah. that's insane they caught four people so it may be the lufthansa thing that there may be a bunch of people getting killed over the next several months as a result of this as people so go maybe out jason spend stratham dimes. will do instead of the italian job with gold they're going to do the philadelphia job with dimes with dimes yeah it's just it's kind of philadelphia ish we're just saying i'm not sure what that means but thank you <laughs> all you right i'll just some have economic a... stuff we'll, we'll start out with some economic news from this morning we'll buzz through this pretty quickly yeah i thought this was interesting so it was interesting this morning came out some economic numbers I thought it was important to get on the podcast today because, uh, as we know, the, you know, the PCE is what the Fed really looks at. And we always make fun of the academics and the economists pounding their chest, you know, never had a real job. They never get judged on their performance, <laughs> but like to be hoity-toity people. They were actually in line with a lot of the forecast. And just very quickly, and I, and I want to hear your comments, the consumer spending rose a little bit, probably a carryover from a lot of the summer vacation spending. 
Mm. Jobless claims continue to rise a little bit. So we should see a tick up in the unemployment, maybe to four, 4.1%. Because tomorrow, Friday, the first Friday of the month is December 1st, they're going to wait till next Friday to, to uh, release the unemployment number. Uh, but it's we know inflation is coming down, which is great. But the consumer is cooling. The, the, the job market is cooling. And unemployment is going up. Yeah. And I think my take on this is I went right to the PCE year over year, which was supposed to be 3.1, came in at three. So that's it's a little bit cooler than what was expected. But you got to remember that number is still one full 100 basis points higher yeah. than what the Fed wants at this point. So the people that are out there talking about the Fed after the beginning of the year is probably going to start reducing interest rates. Not necessarily. They're going to be watching that employment figure and they're going to be watching that PCE. And unless we see a big spike in either of those, either going down on the, the PCE or massively up on the continuing claims, I don't see the Fed making any changes at this point. I don't wow. think they're going to go up, but I don't think they're going to go down anytime soon. No, I, I agree. And look, just we just got to keep chewing on these numbers and see where it puts us here. Maybe mid-December, mid, uh, mid uh, we'll do a 2024 outlook and we'll go into a deeper dive on a lot of these numbers. And I wanted to bring up this chart because I, I like to be a technician. These charts always tell a story. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a bit of an interpretation of it. But on October 23rd, we did this chart. I thought this 50 day moving average was going to be the ceiling. We'd be range bound for a little bit. I thought we'd get a pullback, which we did a pretty steep pullback. I thought we would do that a little bit slower towards my target one for the year. But we hit that 41, 4200 level, which was very strong. I figured we'd get a bounce, but holy crap, that is a parabolic move. <laughs> Surprise the hell out of me and a lot of people that manage a lot of money like ourselves. It's good. It's good for our clients' accounts. The steeper it goes up, the steeper it's going to come down. What do you think? Yeah, and it was. I don't want to be too much of a technician wonky here. It was setting itself up for a just a traditional head and shoulders, a, a reverse head and shoulders. For okay, we go up, we hit that descending line again, and then we come back down when basically hit that one line where it was a few months ago and bounced back up. But yeah, this was a big head fake. And it was a big head fake with a couple of big gap up days in there, which on good volume and continually good volume. So I, I think it's healthy from the market standpoint. It's healthy from the client standpoint for sure. But yeah, I'm right there with you. I think there's, I think there's a little bit more to come for now, because you've just got momentum going up. But I think there's the, also the possibility of that turning around. I've, a lot of it, I believe, is going to be as we start to get some whisper numbers out of retail and things along those lines, that could have some major effects. And, and, I, and I truly believe half of that parabolic move is based on two things. One is a short squeeze, right? Yep. A lot of the big hedge funds, private equity, big people like... <clears throat> They, they were cashing out on a, a lot of the move, whether it was some, most, or all of their short, they were cashing out. The mm. second thing I truly believe it may have been, a lot of these money managers just trying to beef up their numbers for Q4. Yeah. And you may see, right, a lot of exiting of this at the end of the year. And then at, at, at the beginning of next year, looking for a flush out in Q1. And then to get back in at cheaper prices. So mm -hmm. I, I I don't know how much those two were factors, but they were absolutely two factors that played into this. Yeah. And I, like I said, I mean, that the other thing is as a hedge fund manager, it's been a tough year to manage money this year. That, I'll be the first That's to say- That's a lot of BKG been, there. Yeah. It's just all over the fence and you've had interest rates all over the place and everything else. And- yeah. It's been a it's been a tough year to make money this year, and these guys get paid bonuses to to perform. Oh, and I can see where if there was some bets to the the downside, and this started to reverse, they're all covering those shorts very fast, so that their numbers don't look horrible for the end you know for the end of the year at this point. Yeah, I agree. So I know we cover this every four to six weeks. You started mm -hmm. it. We've alternated yeah. the CNN greed and fear index. I got to tell you, riding the coattails of that parabolic move down and up, yeah. uh, one month ago, 
extreme, extreme fear, fear at 21. <laughs> and one month later, we're at 66, 67. Yep. I, again, you got to be Rumpelstiltskin and just sleep through all this. <laughs> I, it's just crazy. And obviously, we have the one-year chart there on the bottom mm -hmm. showing the up and down and fear and greed. And we all know the average retail investor, right? I, I try and tell my clients, I got a couple of clients, stop looking at your accounts every day. Yeah. Don't even look at it once a week, once, twice a month, if you have to. And they're like, oh, but I, I, I got to No, you don't have to. You have a life to live. And mm -hmm. this chart just proves why people are fearful or why, yeah. oh my God, if it's going up, it's going to go down. And when it goes down, they think it's going to go down further. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So a couple of the other charts that ride into this, I'm not going to cover all of them, but interesting enough, right? The stock breath, we saw that grief, you know, came back up again. But if you notice, the greed is not as high as it was in July. It's only about half. Hmm. And I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, the put call volume, I thought that was interesting too. The market's going up, right? So where, why is, why there should be more calls involved hmm. in there. And I don't know if that VIX indicator may be broken or not. The junk bond demand is also very interesting too. You would figure, right? Before they start lowering the Fed rate again in the next six to nine months, people would be piling into the junk bond funds, maybe yeah. not particular bonds, right? But the bond funds, because the asset on those bond funds are going to appreciate. Mm -hmm. And they've been appreciating. I That's part of one of, it's part of the portfolios I run. I have junk bond funds in them and yeah. they're doing extremely well this year. We're having a great year. The yields are high. The prices have been going up. And that's it's the double whammy. It's so interesting why, that why, why is it so low for yeah. the demand? Yeah, that's the interesting part. Is yeah, why why now is it yeah down? I guess it's when somebody looks at okay, I can buy a junk bond fund and get maybe eight eight and a half percent, or I can buy a treasury fund and make five and a half. I can sleep better at night with the five and a half than I can with the the eight or nine. But because of the depressed asset values. Yeah. You're going to get appreciation when the rates come down and they will come down, whether it's, and again, even months, if it's more than a quarter or a half a point, that means something mm -hmm. went wrong in the economy. We all yeah. understand that, but they're going to, rates are going to get cut in half in the next two to four years. So that means you're going to get capital appreciation. This demand stinks. It's, it, yeah. it, it's just too low. I mean, we all know, you know, back here in the March timeframe, right? That was, you know, Silicon Valley Bank and three oh, banks, yeah. three major banks failing. So I understand people were more fearful not to. Actually, if you think about it, it was in higher demand then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? I'm sorry. We're, it was in higher demand then. Again, rates have only gone up since then. Mm -hmm. Asset prices have been depreciated. That means they're going to make more over time. So yeah. a bit of a conundrum there is trying to figure out a little bit of that mentality. You figure the hedge funds and the private equity would be, be piling into that area. Yeah. Uh, two other very quick things. Consumer is still strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're still spending. Again, we didn't post a number because we want to limit some of the charts because you know me, I get a little too wonky with it. That yeah. um, credit card balances keep carrying over and it keeps going above $1 trillion, mm -hmm. even though the banks and the credit card companies have basically reduced the amount of accounts that are uh, allowing to increase their credit limits. Yeah. We'll have and to see how this pans out, especially yeah. after the holiday season. There was, I forget what they were talking about on the news this morning. They were saying it was like the, okay, everything's going to hell. I'm just going to spend it all at this point and I'll YOLO. figure it out. You, you know? only live once. It's until you have until you have a ton of debt on you that you can't get rid of at 20 some odd percent. It's insane. All right. What do you got? I'll just quickly go over, and I think we covered a lot of what I had. I'm going to just go in and talk about one real subject here, and I think it's just something we haven't covered in a while, which okay. is housing. The interesting thing is Case Shiller, which is the index of home prices. Interesting. We're just staying steady, Eddie. Home prices have come down just a little bit from the prior month over month. Um, year over year, though, they've kept eking up and they're actually eking up prior uh, from the, the previous month. They went up pretty significantly, a full point, you know, 1.6% up from Amazing. the previous month. So 
home prices are staying up and new home sales have waned down a little bit. So the interesting thing is as new home sales happen or they lessen, that means there's less inventory out there and it means yeah. the prices of homes are staying up. I haven't seen the latest numbers on existing home sales, but those have been declining all year long. And I think a lot of it is with rates all the way up there at 3% or yeah, a lot of these people have homes where they've got three and 4% loans on those homes and the prospect of leaving and going someplace else and, you know, taking a, taking a hit on the mortgage when they leave that really low mortgage and go to a higher one. It's interesting that people are sheltering in place at this point and not yeah, making but the new home sales. Home builders are under 52, new home builders are on a 52 week high. Yep. Yeah. I and know. we were talking about this before the show. Part of that, I think, is the way new home builders are able to structure the deals. True. Uh, what they're doing, what a lot of the new home builders are doing is they are going in and they're buying down the mortgages. So they'll work with, a lot of times they'll have some kind of a captive mortgage company. It's either internal to their company, like a, a KB Homes has. It's self-funded. Yeah, or it's they have a captive mortgage company that they work with. And what they're doing is they're just taking part of their profits. They're keeping the price of the homes high. So they're not negotiating on the price of the homes, but they're negotiating on the terms of the mortgages, Yeah. which if you know anything about money, that's the exact opposite way you want to you want to do this. You don't want to negotiate on the rate because you can refinance that at some point down the road. You don't want to sure. overpay for the house. So what's happening is with new homes, they're charging you full price for the house. They're not negotiating. They're not giving you all the extras and bells and whistles, but they're making it better for you by buying down your mortgage by a couple points <clears throat> at that point. And that's, it, it's causing a lot of money to come into new home sales. Although this is interesting to see that they've pared back and it was close to the bottom side of the range uh, at this point. I'll have to keep an eye on this over the next several months because I, yeah. I think this is the key. This is the canary in the coal mine when we start to look at home sales. And if we see prices start to come down and inventories go up in those instances, <clears throat> the new home builders are just not building a lot of extra houses, though, <laughs> at least no. in our area. They just build as they need them and not like they used to, where they would build out a whole neighborhood and then just work their way through the sales. They're building little phases within the phases of the neighborhoods around here. Yeah, I gotcha. That said, one more thing I just wanted to cover here because this is an interesting, Please. I thought this was an interesting thing this morning, which was also consumer confidence. You know, oh, with, yeah. with all that's going on, and I think part of this is the stock market going up pretty significantly. We're back to where we were, or, or we're staying consistent with where we were a couple a month or so ago. But look um, at that revision, though, on that. Yeah, it's a big revision down. And I don't know if we'll see the same thing this, this time around, where they revise it down. It's it, That was a pretty big revision down, and we're right back to where we were before. But the consumer is still staying confident. And I see, I think we see it in the numbers out there of people just spending money and continuing to spend money and that's keeping prices up. When does that end? I don't know. And I'm sure some of the holiday shopping will be included in that too. Yeah, like I said, and I think January is going to be an interesting thing to get a, a handle on or get a pulse on the consumer, get a pulse on what the retail sales looked like during that time period. My sense is we're at least going to be on par or slightly better at this point, just because of what I see going on. But once again, I, I don't know if there's more of a switch to shopping earlier, and that's why we didn't see more people in the stores or more shift to online sales. Whatever it is, it, it was different in the retail environment than I've seen in many years. It was pretty quiet. Yeah, like I said, I we got to get our popcorn out in January yeah. to, when we look at some of these retail numbers and the consumer confidence to really see, number one, where people spending, which I think they will be, but are they spending it with cash they have mm -hmm. or borrowed money? Yeah. And I think that's going to be a bigger indicator of what's to come. I'm right there with you. I think we're, 
we're at a we're at an interesting point. People are still employed. We still are pretty close to full employment. It'll be interesting to see what it starts to look like that first quarter of next year. Are some companies going to start pairing back employees? If they're not seeing it, I know we've got ISM manufacturing index coming out tomorrow. That'll be an interesting thing to see because I think that's the last, uh, there's one more report before yeah. year end yep. at this point. So it'll be right in that last week of December to get an idea of how it went. Now, manufacturing has not been good this year. Yeah. And we've seen it across not only the big manufacturing index, but also the Fed manufacturing indexes for their different regions. All of them have been bad. There's really not yeah. been a good one this year. No. Yeah. No, but by the time we do this again in two weeks, we'll have a lot of better, we'll have a lot more to talk about. It'll be interesting. And like I said, I'll have a little bit of a European perspective as well. Coming from over there, it'll be interesting to see what what the world looks like from from that side of the pond. I I was there earlier this year and really didn't pay much attention when I was there. Just little nuances here and there, but it'll be interesting to see and we'll be in more areas of Europe. Well, so Germany and France were really... in a recession in the last 12 months. Yeah. I don't know where they are now. I don't know. I think Britain was teetering. And obviously, yeah. those are the three main economies over there. Yeah. It'll so. be interesting. We'll spend the most time in Germany. So that'll help to get an idea. And I typically talk to business owners when I'm over there. So it'll be interesting to, to have some conversations about what's going on. Sounds good. Cool. Guys, thank you for joining us once again. We will be back in two weeks. When I get back, keep an eye on the channel for some shorts updates as I make my way throughout Europe and we'll keep you in the loop of what's going on across the pond. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you catch all these updates as they happen. Thanks a lot and we'll see you guys back in two weeks.